Hello guys, this is going to be a more informal video. Uh, my last video about two or three weeks ago was about the origins of Easter. And after I posted that video, I continued to study up on the month of Easter. And I wanted to kind of offer a few corrections of myself on that video. So a lot of the time on that video was spent investigating the claim that the holiday Easter comes from the pagan goddess Ostaru. And I felt like I looked at it pretty thoroughly, but then I ultimately dismissed it. Now I've continued to do further research on it. Some of the claims is that the Easter came from the goddess Ostaru, which is even accounted for in a Christian source, St. Betty the Venerable. Allegedly, St. Betty claims that the name Easter comes from the pagan goddess Ostaru. Now, although I came across many different sites talking about this and claiming this, and even miss many Christians claiming the opposite, all citing St. Betty, none of them really provided the actual source for me to go look up. I had tried finding the source and really just found a whole bunch of commentaries on St. Betty's writings regarding Ostaru. But now that I've actually found the source from St. Betty, I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, Osoru Monoth has a name which is now translated Pascal Month, and which was once called after a goddess of theirs named Osoru, in whose honor feasts were celebrated in that month. Now they designate that Pascal season by her name, calling the joys of the new rite by the time-honored name of the old observance. So, in my other Easter video, I claim that the goddess Osoru has no evidence, has no sources backing her up, I was wrong. We have a source. As far as I know, this is the only source we have, but I was wrong. I said there, there are no sources, there is at least one source. Because I was not able to find the source originally, I thought that St. Petty was just claiming that the name Easter came from Osoru Monoth, to which skeptics of Easter have claimed that the month Osoru Monoth comes from the goddess Osoru. All that does look to be correct. I had followed the claims that Easter came from Osoru Monoth, I did not follow the claim that Osoru came from a goddess named Osoru, because I didn't think that there was any evidence for this goddess Osoru. But that last bit is where I was wrong. There is evidence for this goddess Osoru. Oh, and by the way, when I'm saying evidence for this goddess, I mean evidence of a belief in this goddess, not that this goddess is actually real. Now, I'm still wrestling with different thoughts on this goddess Osoru, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there that there is actually evidence for this goddess of Soru, and of course from that being evidence that that is where we get the name Easter. One place of skepticism which I might be bringing up, and this is actually a skepticism that I'm rejecting, is that it's possible that Betty made up this goddess of Soru to make a point. Because Pascal arguments, which by the way, Pascal arguments mean arguments on the festival Pasca, not Pascal's rager, but the Pascal arguments do seem to be like a 2,000 year old debate. And really from what I can tell, the debates really boil down to one thing. Should Christianity honor its Jewish heritage or reject its Jewish heritage? Now because I have a lot of love for the Jewish people and really like the Jewish heritage of the Christian faith, I do definitely do have opinions on this debate. But I could argue, because St. Betty seems to be more pro-Jewish and arguing in a time of anti-Jewishness. So it could be argued that he made up the Ostoru goddess as reasons of why we should go more Jewish. Because, see, we can either accept that old name, Pascha, or if we take that new name, Easter, oh, that's actually pagan and we don't want to do that. So he could have made up the goddess Ostoru to make a point. This is a thought that I had, but I'm rejecting this thought because this passage from De Temporum Rationale, it is not talking about Pascal season, it's talking about the Anglo-Saxon calendar. If St. Betty was making up this goddess to promote a more Jewish tradition, then he would have made this claim in an argument for the Pascal season, not in a report of uh, the Anglo-Saxon months. So this idea that I initially had about St. Betty making up this goddess, I'm rejecting that idea. Now, on the flip side, a lot of people saying that Easter is pagan will then go on to say that celebrations of Astoru included eggs and bunnies. Well, where is that source? I am still not seeing that source. As said, as far as I know, 
this passage from St. Pity is the only source we've got for this goddess Osaru. And it does not mention eggs, it does not mention bunnies, and it does not mention a specific day that aligns with Easter as we celebrate it today. So for those who claim that Easter is pagan, named after Osoru, who was celebrated by eggs and bunnies, then you are still adding uncredible, unsightable elements to your argument. This is something that's common, and what I initially thought that St. Betty was doing with this goddess Ostara. It does happen all the time. And I do remember a time when I was young, when my brother and I were in a debate on something, and I just made up some evidence on the fly. He called me out on that, and I was really embarrassed by it. I can also see another side to it. As said, nearly 2,000 years of church debate over, over whether we should embrace our Jewish heritage or reject our Jewish heritage. What does it look like when we choose to reject our Jewish heritage? We start naming Jewish festivals off of pagan goddesses. I think this is a fitting judgment of the church. We try to reject God's own people, his own chosen people, the Jewish people, and it makes us look pagan for it. I still believe that the Paschal season, Easter, is of Christian origins, is of Jewish origin, origins. Pascha comes from the Hebrew Pesach, and in most of the world, it is still called Pascha, not Easter. It is the post-Anglo-Saxon world that calls the festival Easter. In my previous video, I did say that I am not sure where eggs and bunnies come from, but I did concede that they do seem to be more pagan to me. This is something else I have changed my opinions on, not the bunnies, I still have no idea where the bunnies came from, but the eggs, I have come across some arguments that have been convincing to me. Easter is at the end of the season of Lent, and in the Catholic tradition still practiced today, it is heavily encouraged to give up all meat products for the season of Lent. Well, when you've got an entire community of people not allowed to eat meat products, which would include eggs, then you've kind of got an abundance of eggs lying around that are not allowed to be eaten. And so when Lent is over, at the time of Easter, you've got an abundance of eggs. It is argued that they probably decorated them and celebrated Easter with the first time being allowed to eat eggs in a while. This is a perfectly plausible explanation to where our decoration of eggs came from. Bunnies still don't know and still don't care where bunnies came from. But these two things I have changed my opinion on. There is evidence that the ancient Anglo-Saxons worshipped a goddess named Ostaru, from whom we do get the name Easter. And two, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus with eggs actually does, in a weird way, have tie back to Christian tradition, not pagan tradition. Now one thing I did wrong with these calendars was I spent a lot of time focusing on the Viking calendar instead of the Anglo-Saxon calendar. See, I had thought that there were more connections between the Anglo-Saxons and the Nordic people than there really are. Yes, there are a lot of connections, they are geographically really close together. But there are still some differences. The calendars do have a lot of similarities, as St. Betty describes the Anglo-Saxon calendar as being six months of winter and six months of uh, summer, exactly as the Viking calendar looks. I had also been too critical on Time Nomad's aesthetic, which is an aesthetic that bothers me personally. That is a pet peeve of mine, but that doesn't discredit their source entirely. I do think that they did make some claims that they cannot back up, and that those claims actually contradict what the other site that I had given set claims. Anyway, with these mistakes, I've thought about whether I should remove the video. I think for the time being, I'm going to keep it up. It's probably going to fall out of relevance now that Easter is over. I may have it replaced by around this time next year, however. I just wanted to go ahead and make this video to correct what I had gotten wrong in that other video. I will see if I can find a way to include a link from that video to this video so that those watching it can see the refutal. I had gotten a couple of things wrong in that video. I wanted to correct them in this video. If you're studying up on these things, I just want to be honest with the sources, of the, with the arguments that I present. And sometimes honesty is calling ourselves out. So anyway, thanks for watching. And God bless.